It's 9.30 a.m. on a Monday The regular crowd slithers in There's a leathery man sitting next to me Slowly removing his skin Welcome to All Caps! Let's check in with the Lizard Man. Lizard Man Skip Bayless. This is from a few weeks ago, but I think it's timeless, as many, many things having to do with reptiles are. Here's uh, Skip Bayless from June 21st. On the, It's only fitting that this happened on the solstice. Why are LeBron and AD following Russell Westbrook's wife on Instagram? Triple question mark. Now an undisputed. I don't know why that's important. Is that, What's the implication here? That LeBron and AD are somehow involved romantically with Russell Westbrook's wife? Is that the implication? This guy, he can't keep doing this. When are we, as a society, going to stop this? Sing us the song, you're the lizard man. Sing of LeBron tonight. Well, we're all in the mood, whatever the breed. But I fucked a gecko tonight. This just goes to show you how hard it is to talk about these playoffs. They're a mess. Everybody's injured. The best player left in the playoffs was arguably Paul George, and he's gone. Now it's Chris Paul. The East is whoever has the least injuries. The Suns took out a, a decimated Clippers squad, and now we're all just hoping that, that everybody hangs on and nobody else gets injured. Just to, to explain like how hard it's been to talk about these playoffs, how far off of the standard map of narratives that we usually use. Here's Kendrick Perkins. Giannis proved to me last night is that he's a certified Robin. <laughs> I love that he's not just a Robin. He sent in his Robin application to the central like Robin authorizing committee and he got it certified. He's got like the, the plaque up on his office. And that's okay because Chris <laughs> Middleton is the Batman of that team. And he showed us that last night. <laughs> Joining us now is the Batman, live from Gotham City. Batman, thank you for uh, coming on All Caps. What'd you say this is? All Caps? All Caps NBA. Kendrick Perkins recently went on ESPN and he said, right now on this Milwaukee Bucks team, Chris Middleton is the Batman, end quote. Uh, do, you have any, do you have any thoughts about that? I don't care who Chris Middleton is. You okay. know who I, I'll tell you who I think is Batman is myself, Batman. That's who I think is Batman. I saved 350 kids yesterday. What'd you do yesterday? I saved 350 I, kids from a, from a burning school yesterday. What did you do yesterday? I did not save quite that many children. I got to ask you because this is really where this all comes from is like uh, uh, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. Oh, uh, Scottie Pippen yeah. was has always been referred to as, as Michael Jordan's Robin. Uh, do you have any thoughts on like on that? My thoughts are I get tagged 80,000 times a day by people talking about who's Batman, who's Robin, you know, all these Jordan and Pippen, Kobe and Shaq, you know, whatever. It's, 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 it's exhausting. I think part of the confusion comes from the way people perceive the relationship that you have with Robin, Batman being like the primary... You, t right. you tell me if I'm wrong, but the, like the primary partner in the relationship of right. the Batman Robin relationship. So hold on, man. I got a lot of times. Sorry, hold on. Selena's sex for me. She's uh, she's she's trying on some stuff. She wanted me to vote yay or nay. I voted yay. I mean, look, I like Robin a lot. And he is great at what he does. If he's got it going one night, I got a lot of stuff I could be doing. If Robin's able to take care of some stuff, that's great. I got a lot of other stuff I got to be doing. You know what I mean? Oh, hold on. We're getting another. Someone else is uh, popping in. For Let me just oh, keep nice. you on the line for a second. Someone, <laughs> someone's popping <laughs> What? Riddle me this, Batman. Dude, I don't want to talk to this guy. I hate this guy. He said he had a question and a riddle, and he said he was you were old friends of. So I'm sorry about this, but let's just like hear him out. Riddle me this, Batman. Milwaukee is torn. Who's Bats and who's Robin? The freak who is Greek, or the man in middle ton? I'm sorry. Do you have an answer for that one? 
My answer is, hey, look, stop texting Selena. Stop texting her, dude. He's texting me. No, she's uh, not, man. He's she's texting telling me. Her phone. She's texting she's me. What do phone. I do? She's not texting you. What does Selena text you about if this is true? She just says, hey. I, I, and then we go from there. That's not even her. That's not even when she when she when she initiates a, a, a text session. She always says hello. It's never a hey. Sounds like wow. we have ourselves a quandary, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Any words finally for uh, Kendrick Perkins and all the other uh, uh, national media? Yeah, keep my name out of your mouth. That's what I say. Don't don't bring me up. Don't talk about me. If you have something to say, you can find me. I'm easy to find. How, how do they find you? Um, pretty much on all platforms. It's uh, at B-A-T-M-A-N-N. Somebody already swept in and got the uh, B-A-T-M-A-N. So we got two N's on that. Uh, and obviously, if it's the, 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 the bat signal uh, works as well. Um, you know, if you're, uh, if you're inclined to go, uh, you know, a little uh, analog. Uh, have a good day, uh, Batman. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. Really great to talk to you. Here's what's happening right now in the NBA playoffs. As the NBA playoffs con continue to uh, be hit by injuries to crucial star players, we just have like the, the take a peek, which is the ecosystem of sports takes, is just breaking down. The template for all of our basketball conversations is Michael Jordan. LeBron gets compared to Jordan, so therefore we can talk about LeBron because it's like, oh, is LeBron as good as Jordan? Is Jordan the best? How come LeBron uh, lost all these finals when Michael never lost any finals? Now, there is no player that we can compare to Jordan currently in the playoffs, and nobody knows what to do. Everybody is like, how do we even talk about basketball anymore? We gotta learn to talk about uh, basketball without without the crutch of, of Jordan narrative. That's all. That's what we have to do. Should we grade some of the narratives that have popped up in MJ's absence here? Whereas the media is struggling to come up with storylines? What do you mean? Why would, uh, what, uh, explain it. There are a bunch of new narratives without having your normal stars and Jordan-like stars in there. So we could go through and just kind of rate how the media is doing with those narratives. We could give them so a letter grade. A letter grade. And so then uh, like an A would be what? It's, it's, a, it's a gut feeling. So let's go with this narrative. Chris Paul, Chris Paul, we should be Wait, happy hold on. for Chris so Paul. You want, Chris so Paul just like a gut win. feeling. And that's yeah, the grade is a gut feeling. You can't an English paper. Yes, like, you can. They literally give it like? a grade. And then that grade translates to like a numerical like point average. Right, but in a math test, you get a grade and it's just right or wrong. You get the math equation right, but on an English test, this is more of an English test. Like, was the argument effectively there? Was the prose good? Was the craft there? This is more Can of an I, English t grade. I got it. I, I think I understand. It's not based on truth. I like it, and Elijah. Why, thank you, Caroline. Okay. Ex <laughs> uh, Caroline, explain it. I don't need what to. I'm giving, I'm giving his narrative an A. See the entire the discourse is broken. Even in even within even within our own crew, we can't we can't talk about anything. Words words have become detached from their meanings. There is no truth anymore. I'm being told by people that truth doesn't matter. It's a feeling quality of a gut feeling. But I think that that's unfortunately the society we live in now. Just a bunch of people shooting from the hip. Coaching hires. So the Blazers parted ways with Terry Stotts because that's what you do when, when a team disappoints for multiple years. And they then were rumored to be in the running for Chauncey Billups. It then emerged that in 1997, uh, Chauncey Billups settled a sexual assault case uh, that he was a the subject of, along with Ron Mercer, in order for that case to not go to trial, an, un, an undisclosed monetary settlement. Then people, including fans of the Blazers, were like, okay, not ideal that a person with this in their background has been hired, but legally speaking, we've moved on from this topic. But like, how did you arrive at this decision? And the Blazers don't want to talk about it. Uh, you said the 1997 incident shaped you in unbelievable ways. Can you maybe elaborate on that and, and how it helped shape you? Jason, we were 
appreciate your question. We've addressed this. Um, it's been asked and answered. Let Chauncey so, answer. Um, Chauncey's a thoughtful guy. He's a smart guy. He's been in the public eye for a long time. As many people have pointed out, this happened a long time ago. I'm sure he's got some way to speak about it that is thoughtful. Why are we running from this obviously fair question? Here's the issue. It's not about, like, taking away an opportunity from a person who is deserving of an opportunity or, like, crushing Chauncey Billups' dream to be a head coach. It's about whether these things actually matter at all to our society. I mean, the message the Blazers are sending is, like, to their to their fans who have been uh, survivors of sexual assault cases is actually, like, it kind of doesn't matter. If you have that in your past, it's not going to meaningfully affect, like, the way uh, we approach hiring uh, the person. You would think in a position that is extremely competitive, there's 30 jobs in the entire world, some kind of mark against them in that way, in a public facing role, would be uh, something that would exclude a person from getting a job. But apparently it's not. And the message is that there is a vast machinery that will allow these people who have this kind of like incidents in their past to go forward because it's just really too annoying and or frustrating to deal with and it like hampers dudes' abilities to hire their friends and it keeps us from being entertained by stuff that we want to be entertained by. And it really fucking sucks. That's all. I'm not saying that Chauncey should go to jail. I'm just saying like, make me understand how uh, that didn't matter and take me into the process. But if you don't want to even defend the process, that leads me to believe that you actually don't care about the process kind of at all, which I think is where we're at. I, I don't think the Blazers actually cared about this. Now, people would say, you know, here we're taking an opportunity away from a guy. I, sure. Again, this is not like a regular person. Chauncey is a former All-Star, had a long career in the league. He is a finals MVP. He was the finalist for numerous other GM jobs. He was on the air with ESPN. By all like measures, he had gotten away with it. How many more awesome opportunities does a guy need to get? He also needs to get like his dream of like being a head coach after being a finals MVP, All-Star, etc. Anyway, this story sucks. Let's go to the scroll. Dennis Schroeder wants a hundred fucking million dollars. Here is a report from Lakers Daily uh, that is aggregating something else in the take a beat that I don't want to. I'm not even going to click on it. That's where I'm at right now. I see things happen in my social media feed. I see the headline and that's all I want to know. Where is this coming from? Is this accurately sourced? Is the person an actual journalist who cares about truth or are they just going off a gut feeling that they had? I don't care. But here's the report. NBA Central aggregating Lakers Daily. Report. Dennis Schroeder. Schroeder, quote, has communicated he wants 100 million to 120 million in free agency. First of all, over 25 years? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Why is has communicated the only thing in quotes, but like the number and the dollar amount not in quotes? I don't understand. I don't understand it either. Uh, this mean, what does that mean? Like, I guess has communicated, it leaves a lot out. Did he sign it? Did he write an email? Did he like write on his palm and then put his palm against the glass of like a bakery while like Genie Bus was inside of it? Did he tell his agent? There's a lot of questions, okay, but we're just gonna roll with this. 100 to 120 million is crazy, but I respect it. I love it. I love this move from Dennis Schroeder. What's the downside? They say no? Here is Patrick Beverly making fun of CP3 after uh, getting called for a foul in which he undercut. He definitely fouled him. I, I just want to break this down because it's an, it's an amazing sell. And by the way, one of the greatest sells of his career because he got a flagrant one on Patrick Beverly on what should have been a common foul. Here's the undercut. Now, Chris kicks his leg all the way out. His right leg goes all the way out. And then when he falls down, breaks his fall a little bit with the hand. And then when he hits, he like bounces his butt up. And then he hits on his butt, bounces his butt up, and then grabs at his, at his testicle area. Here's the question. Are Chris Paul's testicles so saggy that he has to wrap them around and up the back of his butt so that when he fell on his butt here, he actually fell on his nuts? <laughs> This is the story that nobody's talking about. Forget about Chris Paul and his long career and how uh, deserving he is of a championship. He's in his first conference finals and yada, 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 yada. This guy's nuts 
go all the way up his, his, the, his backside. I really hate this visual. Well, I, I hate it too, but it happened. It's a factual thing. that ha He's cupping his nuts and he didn't hit anywhere near his nuts. So what happened? And then finally, when it was all over and Pat Beverly just wanted to beat traffic, uh, he, for no absolutely good reason at all, after walking three feet away from him, pushed Chris Paul in the back. Like, why? I hope you got home 20 minutes early. Like, I hope that really helped you, Patrick Beverly. I don't know if I love or hate the story. I just need to know more anatomically. Uh, Scotty Pippen. Did you know that Scotty Pippen uh, has a line of bourbon? Scotty Pippen has a bourbon line, and he's not just the spokesperson and the owner. He's an avid drinker of it. When you refuse to go back in the game and Phil just set a up small the play note. for like, Tony Kukoc. Dan, Cooper. I love the knickknacks. We got to move some of them. I, I feel like I'm at a fucking flea market, my guy. Like, I can't find you. I legitimately, I can't see you. But when so. you say a racial move. Well, why would, why would Tony, who was a rookie, get the last second shot and you put me out of bounds? That's what I mean, racial. I understand why Scotty would feel this way. You know what I mean? Like, from his perspective, like, looking at it from his perspective, they bring in Tony Kukoc. Who the fuck is Tony Kukoc? Like, the guy we shredded in the Olympics and made look like a Dumbo. When LeBron James leaves teams, the entire city economy goes into a fucking freefall. The Bulls won, like, what, 52, 53 games? They were a, a Dick Bavetta call away from going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Like, they, they were a... They didn't fall apart at all, and that's because of Scotty Pippen. And I can understand where, in that moment, you be like i get it wouldn't you i this is the thing i don't understand wouldn't you be like listen after that after they make that play call wouldn't you be like hey everybody i don't give a shit what he said you give me the ball or when we go back into the locker room i kill you and if i don't kill you then you better never fucking close your eyes because the second you do i will get you and don't you think he gets the ball if he sits? that's what jordan would have done and see we've done it again now we're back into the jordan narrative what do you mean feel set up a play for steve Kerr? he didn't set that play for steve Kerr. he set that play for michael jordan I thought in the huddle, Mike says, I'm going to throw you the ball. You'll be open at the foul line. That, and Phil had nothing to do with that? And you don't want to get this show started because it'll take us a long time. I promise you I do want to get it started, Scotty. That's why you're here. It's a ratings game. We're trying to get clips that pop off. I guarantee you I want you to get into it. Dig in. You know who Michael was speaking to when he said that, right? <laughs> that was That was planned. That was speaking to the to the camera. That wasn't speaking out of what we're gonna have to do. I honestly love this. Steve, you're open, so I'm gonna get it to you, okay? I, I they're they're keying in on me. They think I'm gonna take the last shot. I'm gonna get it to you, okay? Are we out? Cut! Okay, motherfucker. Listen, don't ever even look at me again. Or you're gonna get that two-piece right in your fucking mouth. Now shut up! There are thousands of species of lizards, cast heads and earls and tree, iguanas, basilisks, mollusks, side blotched and horny and spiny. Neotropical frilled and agamas, whip tails and club tails and glass. Slow worms and gilas and beaded All in the reptilia class